we will be talking about more about the communication and uh, hybrid threats and also <laughs> like the hybrid threats in, in the concept of the information and uh, how the ecumenism and, uh, could help to avoid or didn't give the arms and weapons uh, for, for the aggressors uh, to use the, the uh, faith against someone else. So uh, I called our lesson the holy hybrid war because um, according, uh, according to, to Oon, you can, uh, you will, uh, I will uh, send you my presentation. It's very short and there are the materials. It would be uh, more materials uh, here, the links mm. on all the materials that you can use to uh, verify in my words or uh, 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 telling that I am, I am a little bit liar uh, in this context. So the, 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 uh, the war, uh, I was uh, surprised. I was surprised that uh, um, not everyone understand uh, this um, name like hybrid war or hybrid warfare. What do you think about it? Could someone explain it? I, I, I give my explanation, but maybe um, you can interact and uh, give me some, some of your thoughts. No? <laughs> okay, good. So, so the, the hybrid, hybrid warfare or hybrid war is some kind of the desire when one state wants to subjugate to, uh, to give the level down uh, on the another country with the help of the politic, economic, culture, and information, information tools. I can add here also the religion, but not for every society or mm -hmm. every country, the religion could be relevant in this hybrid war. Especially in Ukraine, I can um, I imagine that almost every lecture during the school uh, taking uh, as an example the war in Ukraine, but I will be also providing some information about uh, um, about uh, the war about the war in uh, in in United States. I have a very nice. Uh, uh, nice uh, guest, the uh, dean of the faculty of, of uh, philosophy and theology. So thank you, thank you, Father Yuri. And I'm so sorry for the kiss. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the the main the main point in 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 this conversation uh, is <clears throat> to understand what uh, how religion, particularly in Ukraine and in the United States in some, some period, uh, enter on the floor. So uh, I can say that the, the religion is, uh, is the motivation for the war. So I, I decide to, to describe at least uh, three citation and uh, that was used in, in public, publicly, uh, the, uh, the first of all, the Osama bin Laden in 1998 about the Muslim world and uh, how the, this against the American idea and everything. And we know uh, how it goes at the, at the end in 2011 and, and so far. Uh, in, in, in English Cardinal, uh, the um, Allen, uh, he used uh, this kind of, uh, of piece uh, of his uh, citation on the uh, war between uh, Britain, British, um, or Britain, Great Britain, and, uh, and Spain in 1583. And almost immediately after uh, the escalation, and an uh, annex, uh, annexation of, of Crimea, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russian Federation also um, used some piece uh, from, uh, from Quran uh, about the Muhammad 
and he he was talking not a, about the religion but uh, about the help of uh, of his neighbor so um, a, a lot of uh, of public uh, person using the common text uh, especially the holy bible to explain some uh, some of uh, the actions and we have a very nice narrative uh, especially in this war in Ukraine, it calls uh, uh, Ruski Mir, or Russian world. Um, you will find also the, the link to the economist uh, at this point, uh, how, how the economists are describing the, the, this, this idea that were born really in, uh, in 2000, uh, not very, uh, very long time ago, uh, in, in Russia. And maybe someone uh, someone know what I'm talking about about this this idea of Ruski Mir. Okay, so go uh, go on. Um, this is kind of idea that uh, everyone who uh, uh, who could speak Russian and using uh, Russian daily on on home base or official base. Uh, have to be the part of uh, of one nation. Have to be the part of uh, of one country. And then, if someone also uh, reading the books, uh, getting the ideas from the literature from from a different part of the culture, he's also belonging to this kind of uh, Ruski Mir. And um, if you are using something. From, uh, from this natively Russian. So you are belonging to the Ruski Mir. And um, the, the second phase of, uh, of this idea uh, was to, to spreading, uh, was to, to uh, incorporate also the, um, the Russian Orthodox Church uh, in uh, all around the world. And in, in like in 10, uh, in 10 years, uh, more than 100 uh, uh, churches also uh, appear in different country. And I, I don't know, maybe uh, Sister Mary knows that in Central uh, um, African Republic, uh, also in, in like in last one year, uh, the, the Russian Orthodox Church also born and uh, they they built more than ten parishes uh, there, and this parish, by default, by default of this idea of the government, the, the national idea of the government government of Russia, belong to to Russia, to Ruski Mir. So through the idea, through the language, language culture. And, and the religion could be created some kind of the environment in what then enter the political ideas, the economical ideas, and um, you could like create some kind of hybrid state all around the world. And I, I will try to stop this and going to whiteboard. You can also edit it if you want with me. Um, the, the, um, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe some of you have um, better studies than me in uh, some kind of uh, rhetoric and know better, uh, better uh, the, the principles of the persuasion. Uh, but uh, in in the camp of the informational uh, informational war, first of all is creating is creating the story. So you you are creating some of the story on um, on uh, build of this called uh, meta narratives. So, um, for example, the uh, the born of 
of the God and his trespassing and his death and then resur uh, resurrection is the meta narratives. It's some kind of story that we understand by default that we can explain. This, this is kind of the story that we are believing in. And another uh, example of this kind of the story is uh, David and Goliath, when someone small could, uh, could win against someone big. We like this kind of story. And we like also the story when uh, the, the good uh, could fight back uh, the, some, something bad. So this is the man, meta narratives. And this kind of story could be created on, on the different levels, on the um, like public levels, personal levels, and um, social web levels, whatever. And during, uh, during the Cold War, was created the ideas that we have two biggest country and two most powerful countries in the world. So the USA and Russia, for example. And um, even after the fall of, of USSR, this kind of meta narrative, the, the biggest country, the most uh, rich, rich country, and with a huge army, we have until, I don't know, until 24th of February, 2022, then the, the one of the most powerful uh, countries in the world. And this kind of meta narrative was also created on the base of the religion. So all, all the nations here in, in this region, like the Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, and um, some piece of, of Moldova, and some piece of uh, 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 Virmania, is all of those are uh, orthodox and we have the we have the same roots um the, mm, we have the same roots so we are all orthodox nations with the same roots and if we are orthodox we have one roots we could be one nation Um, probably we have an, another kind of uh, creation, and at least in, in nowadays, uh, in European countries, in uh, North American continent, they have another ideas how the states are created. And uh, this kind of peace nation is not working. This kind of religion is not working. And at least in the region of North American countries, North American countries, um, everyone could understand, but not in this region, not in Europe, at least, uh, because still, uh, even af after war, uh, World War II, this kind of nationality is still present. So the nation. And, um, how the nation uh, are created? What are the parts of the nation? What do you think? No? Well, okay. So the first could be the language. If I will make a mistake in, in grammatical writing, please just correct. Me. Um, the language, but until now, for example, uh, in uh, in Brussels, they they have couple of official languages. In the United States, there are no official language. 
in Canada, uh, there are two official languages, English and, and French. Um, I think a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, African um, countries have a have, have couple of the languages that are the, the national or official languages uh, on, on the official base. So the language is not working totally, like kind of could work, but not working. So the religion. Um, in Ukraine, we have uh, at least three Orthodox church, one Greek Catholic church, one uh, Roman Catholic church, at least six different branches of uh, like the uh, one percent more I can say that like at least six branches of um, um, Protestant churches and we have also two kind of uh, the mean, uh, two kind of Muslims and uh, two kind of uh, of of Jewish. So, um, like the majority naturally are the Orthodox Church, but it's only about 29%. Like officially, it, it's the numbers from uh, 2019. So, basically, the Orthodox and practical. Orthodox are 29%. And um, the, they are calling the Orthodox Orthodox without any practice, practice and so on in, in three branches, like the, the uh, Moscow Patriarchate, the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian Church and Ukrainian Patriarchate. <laughs> um, it could be more or less 46%. So probably the religion also don't work. And it could be culture. What does it mean, culture? Like the, uh, the books could be some kind of arts, maybe the food. Uh, I don't know, maybe you have some more uh, suggestion about, about the culture. I, I, I'm trying to, to build the dialogue, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit annoying. I'm trying to build the, the dialogue. So the food is not working. We like pizza. Um, art also uh, not working. If, if you saw um, our our university, the Ukrainian Catholic University, you will find out that uh, we are using a lot of the modern uh, geometrical buildings. So for at least uh, buildings or architecture in, in the kind of arts not working. Books, uh, yeah, I think like the books are most, most spread. We still, uh, uh, reading Dostoevsky, for example, but I, I'm I'm pretty sure, and I'm sure that in Italy, uh, I was studying in in Italy uh, almost for five years, and um, they also like Dostoevsky. They also uh, reading Dostoevsky. So book, it's not the best, uh, the base, uh, the best example. What remain? Attitudes. Attitudes. Behaviors. And what you what you suppose? What what do you think about the attitudes? Like some example, could you could you give? I I don't want to be offensive. Yes. Just. The modality people have towards others. 
believes, believes. feelings, oh. values, Beliefs, values. Okay, good. So the be beliefs, um, like the I can I can assume that uh, in in this context, like beliefs and values, are um, the same thing. So we just crash the religion, so <clears throat> the, the beliefs um, wouldn't enter in in this kind of, of field. So the values, and what kind of you know, the values uh, values we have basically the same as in each country uh, it would it could be more uh, centrical i can say in 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 a region in west region of ukraine and more liberal in in uh, east part of ukraine but at the end we are more or less at the same at the same point and uh, so the values are not also the best case um, of uh, of what does it mean nation and yeah this is a very good meta narrative as if we are trying to think about we could just totally uh, totally kill it or uh, demolish it or uh, and um, I, I don't want to uh, describe the United States of America, but um, like United States consists with with many with, with many people who came from from different parts all around the world in in different time, and United States create a very a very good uh, idea of the nation. Uh, connected with some of the values like the freedom, the dignity, and the equality. So this is kind uh, of modern view on the state when the people could be connected not by the color of the skin, not but by religion, not another another thing, but with common values. So sister, thank you very much. You got a point. So the creation okay. of the states are through the values. And here we have um, um, an old narrative that's is working. It's working until now. And um, meanwhile, I want to add add also uh, the idea. How, uh, how the religion uh, give the motivation for the war. Maybe you know something about that because the Robert, uh, Robert Pape, um, one of the professor of the University of Chicago, uh, he did uh, some kind of uh, of paper about the religion, and he he was trying to uh, describe the idea how religion could influence on uh, on the motivation in during the war, and he he made uh, according to to the especially to the crusades, um, he he create uh, the the material. Uh, um, how how religion really uh, could influence on on the people and also all the terrorists that we have that we had and have in uh, from 1990s until today and he he supposed to uh, totally um, like totally rebuild this idea and give uh, the answer that the territory is the main and basic things for, sink for the war and the people are fighting for, for, for the territory, for the money, for the influence, for the power. Uh, but at the end of the story, uh, he saw that the modern kind of the war and also in, um, in 
in previous time i will also send you this this uh, material uh, was more effective if on the base of this war the the main kings and uh, main leaders were using the religion and we we can see these things in 911 so the the religion was uh, was on the, on the ground of everything i quella movement in in great britain and also in uh, uh, how how the place how the territory could uh, could be very uh, could be used for uh, for some come um, for their hybrid warfare and good example in in our in our case of ukraine um, the kiev okay you uh, it's the capital of ukraine and Ruski Mir, this idea that I was uh, describing to you, uh, was built uh, on, on the base of the Kiev. So it was also created in, in, uh, in late um, USSR. And the, um, the story about um, the baptism of uh, well, not baptism, but the blessing by Apostle uh, Andrew, Andri, um, and the, all this territory of Kiev. It's not, it's not true. He wasn't here. He wasn't on, on this territory um, at all, but it was created for, for creating the importance of the Russian and Moscow church in this like 60 and 70 by um, historians, the Russian historians. And now the Kyiv is something in, in the center, something that is connected for all, uh, all of us, I can say that, like, like the Belarusian, the Russian, Ukrainian, but also the Lithuania and um, Poland and Slovakia and Slovenia and Moldova. So it, it's, every time connected uh, to Kyiv. And from 21st uh, February, the, the main goal, the main point was uh, to take to take Kyiv. So this, this kind of matter and narrative that was created, just the story, the beautiful story, uh, that the Kyiv is the mother of all uh, Russian cities then someone had to proceed on and take take the key by by itself to to make a validation and confirmation of this story and we are returning to our presentation so and if you will use also I, I don't know maybe you can you can try to uh, to click on uh, on my presentation it could be uh, interactive I, I hope so um, uh, and if if you will go on on this link uh, you will find them uh, also the academical text that uh, I use uh, um, the, um, it, it was created by one of the Ukrainian uh, academics from Uzhorod University. And here just describing how from uh, 2014 in Ukraine, uh, we're using this idea of uh, unslaving Orthodox people from uh, Donetsk and Luhansk and Crimea, and he 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 create a, a lot of links and and also a lot of uh, different uh, newspapers that are describing uh, how Russian propaganda was using this kind uh, this kind of of story to go to to bake a cake uh, for the people. And 
brotherhood and legacy. We we just uh, was speaking about that, and um, Ruski Mir goes down, and the Russian and Orthodox as the same thing faces the motivation for for the war and the good example how all of these stories, how all of these stories, uh, um, this are described by Antonio Spadaro. Um, you can uh, you can see on on also on this material uh, how how seven stories he he uh, wrote a seven stories about um, about Vatican how uh, Pope and, and Vatican as a state uh, understand Russia and war in Ukraine. And you will find on the base of this 38 minutes uh, of our talk, you will uh, find out <laughs> uh, how a lot of these meta narratives entered in, in the head of at least Antonio Spadaro. Uh, and how many of these uh, um, of these meta narratives also lives in Vatican, and um, you will find uh, um, the, the the material from one of uh, your future lecture, uh, Anatoly Bobensky. I probably it would be in in some future days. Uh, he very precise, it is in English, he is very precise, describe the errors of this kind of meta narratives. And if we are thinking of the war as a hybrid, hybrid threat, how is How it is creating? I'm trying and new board. So the first step for the hybrid warfare, if if we are talking about the information, information is the story. We we are trying to uh, to come back. So with the story, we know what is created on this, on, on this base. So the second one is disinformation. And you will find um, at least this kind of piece in, in Ukrainian war uh, that uh, this is not a war not a war at all. This is the special operation. And um, mm, at least three heads of uh, or Russian Orthodox Church all around the world in United States, uh, in Germany, and uh, some kind of Italy, like in Italy, Albania, they, um, Mm, wrote that uh, this is the brotherhood war. So we we have the same story, the brothers. We are the one nation and brotherhoods. And then goes the disinformation through Pope. And we have another meta narrative. Uh, about uh, NATO. So the big uh, the big guys are fighting for each other and the, the small one uh, are trying to at least live on, on this territory. 
so that the Russia it's and and the aggression is between NATO and and Russia and not and Ukraine it's only like something very small so the disinformation and changing the main points and mm, the same thing we can uh, see in uh, on the, the uh, base uh, of the mm, uh, of the church so in ukraine if if you are were or if you were monitoring some of the information a couple uh, weeks ago um some part of russian orthodox uh, church uh, did some process of creating the autonomy in ukraine and this kind of uh, non un understandable thing so it's it's a big surprise and nobody knows how how it goes uh, in the future and what does it mean but i i could create and describe uh, the story if you don't know nothing about that. So just just tell me if you have to proceed with with this kind of, of thing. Yes, no, no, yes. <laughs> okay, like very short story. Uh, the, um, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine, uh, <clears throat> in um, uh, Russian Orthodox in Russia, are uh, 58 million people. And um, this, this number is divided, at least according to 2012, uh, 20, that the last last number that you can find online at least in in upper open uh, database are divided by russian ukrainian and belarusian who are living in russia so more or less it could be like 70 million each, each nation more or less, or a little bit, eh, 18, whatever. <clears throat> and in Ukraine, before the 2014, the Russian Orthodox Church have more than 25, percent Ukrainian in uh, as as a faithfulness as a faithful people as a believers and Ukraine have like 40 million people so then like the 25 percent it would be 10 million So it uh, it's uh, like the sixth part of uh, in comparison to uh, to Russia, and it's almost the same number, all like twice less uh, the number of the Ukrainian believers in in Russia. And now, it, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. And these numbers changed uh, dramatically. And uh, Ukrainian or like Russian Orthodox Church was trying to uh, avoid the changing, uh, changing by the believers uh, of the church. So they, they were trying to, to, to spread this kind of, uh, of the message. And I hope so. And that mm, this church is really uh, um, cut the rope and uh, and like will try to manage by uh, herself and the word of true and and word of of Christ 
And we have this kind of disinformation, who is the main one in Ukraine, or who is the, the biggest one, who is have the legacy of this uh, Volodymyr, um, or baptism of Volodymyr from uh, 988, who is the, the main guy in the room. And um, until today, we don't have uh, the precise answer and only a lot of the ideas um, from different parts. So we have a story, a good story. A lot of non-understandable things for the majority of the people. I think like some kind or some of you could even understand what I am talking about because like you are not living in this kind of the context. Uh, con context. And uh, like a lot of disinformation, ideas, and everything just just crazy. And in this in this kind of um, of the story, entering scare is the the right word. I'm scared, so the scare. Okay, good, thank you. I don't know, scare. <laughs> um, this kind, so I'm scared. And the war is it's a good catalyzer for to be scared. And um, the first bombs that goes in Ukraine are going to, TV station in Kyiv. So the, the first first bombs go go down in Ukraine and go through through the TV station and then probably Russian was not so prepared that we have social networks and uh, not more than 40 percent of the people, are using TV channels for get the information. So the basically the the sixty percent of the population in Ukraine are getting the information from social networks. It's a very good number. It's a very huge number, and it has the disadvantages because. <laughs> Not, ev uh, not everyone are using the official sources of the information. So they're using mm, some kind of groups like Telegram groups, WhatsApp groups, Viber groups, uh, Facebook groups, and Instagram as the main, uh, main source of the information. And uh, if you will count the this kind of Christian groups, at least on Facebook, it would be around six million people who enter uh, from Ukraine in this kind of Christian groups. I don't know how it is in your country, but in Ukraine, there are a lot of people uh, who uh, uh, like this kind of the picture, very like mm, fancy, I can say they like fancy pictures with some, um, some of uh, wishes. Like I wish you the good day, the blessed day and, and so on. So we have a lot of this kind of groups and the majority of them uh, are these Christian groups. I mean, majority of them, it's this kind of, of the level uh, of uh, of the information and everything. So the uh, the scare and disinformation and fake stories could very easily enter into the chat. Um, a huge numbers of uh, uh, like the bumped uh, Kyiv. Kharkiv and other cities uh, in the first day launched also the, the refugees. 
So the moment of people, the movements of the people. How how I'm I'm trying to explain this basic uh, basic step of the hybrid war. How it was created also uh, in uh, middle Middle East. Uh, how it was uh, created uh, some kind of uh, United States and how it is going now in, in Ukraine. So we have a story, we have a lot of disinformation. We hear a good portion of, um, of, of stress, at least I can say that, like we have a good, good portion of bad emotions. And this, at least three things provoke you for the moment. And you, you are going or through the country or in another country or, or you are just moving. And in, in this context, entering the, the last Face the pers persuasion so on the base of very really good prepared previous stories a good portion of this information and um, good kind of stress and non understand non understand understandable movements that you are doing on you are very easy to the persuasion of different kind of the stories or different kind of the storytelling so we return to the to the first point and how the true is created so the new true will uh, will look like that so the story, this information, I can say that we can change this third one, the emotion. The moment and the persuasion that you are not right in this situation. And at the end, we will have the truth. And if we are talking about uh, the religion in Ukraine, it's very it's very deep thing because the as I mentioned before, a lot of the people, at least almost half of the people, believe in something. They're not not uh, totally Orthodox or Catholic or Protestant or Muslims or uh, or Jewish, but they believe in something. And um, if in this this period enter some kind of very uh, strong narratives through every each or every media they will believe in so we have a uh, couple of uh, of stories even in uh, ukrainian national um, journals and you will also will find when uh, when people who uh, who was bombed and they uh, they were trying to escape from from the south part of ukraine mm, they were still uh, believing that this kind of people came to uh, to give them a freedom so they were uh, until um, until today. I can and I can hear on the streets here in Lviv when some of the old ladies are um, uh, talking to each other that it's not the fault of uh, of um, of the church or nor the people. It's about one person. It's about or president or someone from from the circle of the president. It's not about uh, this kind of hybrid warfare. And um, we have a four more minutes and we will launch 
a dialogue. Um, you can you can make um, questions, and I want to assume that. Um, sorry, I want to assume that uh, we we are affronting uh, the desire of one state to subjugate another us with the help of the political, economical, and culture and informational tools. And unique weapon against that is uh, the education, first of all, and we can enter here in all this, this topic of the media literacy and the information, the true information. And uh, the ecumenical movement and the, one of the first base things in, in ecumenical thing, it's know each other. So if I'm well, uh, if I could understand someone else, the religion of someone else, the ideas of someone else, I can uh, interact with that and I could be secured. I could understand what we are talking about. And the, the education is the, the, best, uh, the best weapon against the hybrid warfare, especially in the, in the camp of the information. And we, we launched uh, also in, in school, in, in our school of journalism and, and communication, two, two projects on that. Um, the first one uh, was is created. You can find it. I will uh, send you the link. Um, it's created with a short uh, Facebook post. I can some kind of. I will send you in it. There are 47 languages and in 47 languages depends on your context, depends on your country and, and depends uh, of the region and language um, by my students were created a specific short messages for the explanation what is going in Ukraine. And if you could like um, we we created on the first day of the war, and it, it was created by four languages. I was um, I know also Italian, so I in the first day I could enter also with Italian, and um, the main basical idea of this platform was explain what is going in here from different parts of the views, the economical, the political, uh, cultural, the main, the, the point of view of the language and also the religion, what is going on here and what is the reason of this war. And then we also add a lot of memes and, and images that could be used by everybody uh, to post about the information about the war. And the second one is more uh, is, is more about uh, the, the scientific uh, the scientific studies uh, is mm, 49 of our students were collecting the information uh, who is writing what, about uh, the war in Ukraine, especially uh, about the, the information of, of main uh, topics during the war, the main bombing and everything, the, the, what was bombed as, as a hospital and everything, and also this religion dialogue context. And at the end of the story, we figure out that the Google <laughs> is not helping us, like, uh, and the algorithm is helping uh, in, in Ukrainian. It's very, like, you can find everything. In English, semi-good. Uh, we are totally down uh, in the context of Germany. Um, like, in, in Germany, the, on the first five uh, um, answers, you will find 
the RT, the Russia Today, that describe all the information, all the situation in Ukraine. And the four, five next uh, will be, we call it like trash websites. So it's kind of, uh, you, can, you can find everything there that not verified. This uh, in um, um, Spanish and Portuguese language environment, we can't uh, we can find nothing verified on the like five first uh, topics. You will find also the web trash with with different information, and basically they they are using uh, the Wikipedia. Uh, to to transmit some of the messages and and in the context of this Russian uh, Ru Ruski Mir or Russian world uh, that uh, as a meta narrative from from more than twenty years uh, you will you will find this kind of the connections and everything so we 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 prepared a very uh, very profound. Um, scientific scientific studies for that and um, we, we now we want to, to publish it uh, in Scopus one of the journals in Italy because Italy is also like very pro-Russian country so uh, we, we are trying to uh, to explain what is going on here also on the base of the information and journalistical uh, journalistical uh, communicational part of the view so to underline everything that i i'm i was trying to <laughs> to explain in very short term um, and some of the consideration read like read a lot and use at least two or three uh, fonts uh, two or three like materials that are describing the same situation to under understand what is going on. Um, personal relationship, if you want to understand someone and someone also from from especially from the part of the religion, because like you you know that the Muslims from like are not everyone are terrorists. You know that, and there may be couple, couple not very intelligent people who who <laughs> uh, trying to do this on different, also on the base of the very deep religion uh, religion things. But the majority are not that kind of the people, and this is also the disinformation. And also the meta narrative that we get from from 2011, more than 10 years that we 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 uh, we are suffering from from this kind uh, of the story, and all the Muslims are suffering this kind of the story. Um, so know the people personally uh, from each context or different context uh, of of the religion camp, and using like using them for uh, if something is is appearing so they they could give you personally at least the confirmation and validation of some of what is going on with that uh, and uh, yeah, I can I can uh, consider it you the English English uh, online media, a uh, Kiev independent. Is it's totally English, so you can you can use it. I can consider it also. I will like during our question or maybe when next lecture will come in, I will just send all the links to uh, to you. And Tvoje uh, Misto, and 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 Lviv Lab. I can also consider this this kind of website. It's very uh, slow media. Like we have 
and like in in journalists we have like the fast media like normal one that you will re receive like the news each second and the slow media then when you are using like one analytical or just like the the material in two three days but it's it, it very uh, very good and it's it has like different point of views and everything yes susanna uh, thank you, Father Andre. Uh, and I would like to ask, I'm actually, I'm, um, let's say, an old school. So in my school days, I learned Russian, so I can uh, read in Russian. So uh, these days, I'm reading like Mediazona and Medusa and Novaya Gazeta. Dot EU. Would you would you recommend? Like, are you okay with this? Or yeah, yeah, I, you know, I. I could be, uh, and I'm, I'm interest part. So I'm, I'm this subject of this conflict. I'm the Ukrainian. And um, for example, like um, our actor uh, give an interview for the Medusa, like on, on the first days uh, of the war. And he was speaking about a lot of things like that we, we are sheltering the people that we are trying to manage, um, to manage like all everything, the security for, uh, for our students. And we are trying to figure out how to cover ourselves and our families. And we are trying to get the families of our students and professors from the central part of Ukraine. But the end of this story, Medusa wrote that we are using German <laughs> bomb shelters, <laughs> and we are very prepared uh, to cover all, uh, like everybody. And then, not on not on uh, the Medusa, but on the next day in the Ria Novosti, uh, like Ria News, uh, they wrote um, they wrote the, the article that uh, with an image of our uh, university that here is situated the bill laboratory with some kind of very extreme virus <laughs> that could uh, that could uh, everyone who uh, uh, who who have this genome of the russian people so you know, <laughs> I'm 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 very uh, sad about some kind of of this like also narrative lines of the Medusa, and uh, if if you saw the uh, this kind of interview with with our president of Ukraine and uh, with with uh, Russian journalists, there they were like talking and and taking. Uh, question like very very strange questions like how are you feeling it, like <laughs> what the president of the country uh, that uh, is in the state of the war could like give the answer of what I am feeling bad probably like and like from the part of the profession as a journalist it's a uh, it's non-professional question during this kind, this kind of thing. And all the questions like during, during the hour was this kind, like when you will win, <laughs> like what? So I, I'm not, I, uh, I can say like this kind of the Russian narratives enter very deeply like deeply uh, through the propaganda, through, through different kinds of the media and everything entered very deeply in, uh, in the people. And if they are not, if they are position, positioning themselves even as a left wing in, in politics and want to peace and freedom and everything, and uh, probably they they received a very big and, and huge enormous uh, kind of propaganda that you couldn't be so like so objective with uh, with this kind of the stories but yeah like medusa is one of the better so 
if you, if you if you want to to read like Russian media, Megudusa is the best that we have in in this period of the time. So and also if you want to uh, read like in Russian, you can use uh, Svoboda. If you are if 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 you at like uh, belief belief in in this kind of the media and whatever. May I uh, add something? Yes, sure. Mm, often uh, Russian so-called liberal media are saying uh, like just um, soft power, not being so harsh as the uh, openly uh, propaganda media, but they do they work uh, very softer, but uh, uh, reproducing the same messages. So I, I would like to, as Ukrainian, yes, I would like to uh, suggest you, there are so many Ukrainian bilingual uh, media, um, both in Ukrainian and in Russian, and even in English. So there are a few of them. Maybe Father will uh, suggest the better, um, best of them. Yes, please, that would be good. I knew about the key independent, but not more. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can also use the Kyiv Post is the alternative to Kyiv Independent. But a couple of years, no, one year ago or two years ago, and they changed the uh, the uh, the main uh, I know like the head of this media, and uh, and a lot were changed also with a with this chief uh, editor politics or editor politics and uh, a lot of uh, journalists don't want to uh, to work in kiev post so they create kiev independent so at least we have like this these two very more or less verified uh, media mm -hmm. english speaking like only english speaking and uh, they, they are printing their own uh, newspapers. And basically these this two kind of newspapers every day are on the tables of the diplomacy. So 